it's probably the best environment I've ever used, to be honest, is a tiling window manager. I'll explain more what that is on a video on window managers. I keep plugging videos I haven't made yet. Jeez, I'm going to dig myself a really deep hole here with all the stuff I have to do. It may have taken eight years, but here we are. I want to talk a little bit about tiling window managers. Now I'm going to open this here in in Pop! OS with Pop! Shell as an example of one sort of tiling window manager. And then we're going to swap over to a, a different one, the one that I'm actually using now. So to begin with, when you're talking about a tiling window manager, we're all used to windows like this, right? Where you click the windows, you drag them around, maybe you can latch them onto the side of the screen or what have you. But at the end of the day, it's very mouse oriented, right? You click and drag windows around, you activate windows by clicking on them and so on. Uh, and also you have you can overlap windows and you have a lot of control over exactly where the windows are and, and whatnot. And it's perhaps not the most efficient use of screen real estate all the time, as you can see here. Now what tiling, a tiling window manager allows you to do is it allows you to offload some of the burden of positioning all of these windows onto the computer itself, right? As I've perhaps one of the themes of a number of videos on this channel is that computers exist to automate boring and repetitive tasks. And that goes beyond just say programming and scripting, even just laying out windows is something that can be automated. Uh, so in the case of uh, Pop! OS, right, you can toggle that on with uh, Super Y and then boom, we are into a tiling window layout. In Pop! OS, and this Pop! OS is layout system is, I think, fairly similar to i3. Uh, now, they're a little bit different in that in i3, whenever you, in fact, let me just kill all these. Um, in, in i3, windows divide by default down the same edge every time. So like, I launch this window, and then I split the screen in half to do two more. Um, in i3, if I were to launch a third, it would cut the, it would put put it horizontally again. Whereas Pop Shell uses sort of a, a Fibonacci dwindling scheme. So as you launch Windows, it progressively gets smaller like that. Um, however, i3 and Pop Shell are also very, are very similar in the fact that there are two dimensional window layout on the screen. What that means is that you can navigate up and down using J and K and left and right using H and L, or your arrow keys. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think H, J, K, and L are default i3 bindings, but pretty much everyone, I think, configures it that way. I certainly did. Um, now, you also can have some control over how the windows split. If we close some of these out, uh, in, the case of, in the case of Pop Shell, it's a little bit clunky, uh, but what you can do is you can use Control O to change the orientation like that, and then they'll, you'll continue to split it, and you can change the orientation. So you can you can play around with how the windows split to put them where you want. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do in i3 than it is in Pop Shell. In i3, you just say split the next one horizontally, split the next one vertically. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I've actually I don't use this very often, and I moved away from i3 to this, and I recently discovered why. So what I noticed when I was using i3, because I was using i3 for many years, was that I wasn't really using i3. I was kind of just chucking different windows on different workspaces and toggling between them like that, but I wasn't really taking much advantage of the tiling features of my, my tiling window manager. Uh, and I figured out why, but it, it took discovering a totally different scheme to understand why. So. The issue that I have with both the i3 approach and the pop shell approach here is that although it is a tiling window manager and so the computer tiles it for you, you are still very much in control over where the windows go. You have to position the windows where you want them to go. And it's a two dimensional layout, so you have to move left, right, and up, down. So it's a little bit complicated to get around because it's two dimensional. And it's a little bit complicated to lay out because you have to pick where you're going to put everything. 
which gets to be, which I found sufficiently annoying that I, I barely ever used it. Well, I think that I found the window manager that I was looking for. So let me pause this recording and I'll pop over to TTY3 where I have, I have it running and we'll take a look at that. Quick little control alt F3 and here we are. This is DWM. It's a tiling window manager and superficially it looks a lot like i3 but it is structurally very different and I find that it really works for me in the in a way that i3 never did. So the biggest difference and the reason why I like DWM so much is that it's one-dimensional it's not two-dimensional so although the windows visually appear on the screen as though they are laid out in two dimensions there is actually no notion of moving side to side it's all up and down so rather than using left right up down you, you just use up down to cycle through them it's, a, it's actually based on a stack so what happens is if I uh, pop over here and do a new tag, as you start spawning windows in a tag, they get pushed on top of the stack. So this is the old window, this is the new window, and this is the newer window, and this is the newest. So as you can see, they keep just stacking up like this. And you can use J and K to navigate up and down the stack, and say I want to focus on this window instead. Um, I have it mapped to super space. I think it's super enter normally. I don't remember what the default key binding was. If you hold down super and, and my build hit space, it takes that, bumps it to the top of the stack, and pushes what was at the top of the stack down. So it is completely one dimensional. Now you can, you can patch in alternative layouts. This is the default one. I have a couple. Um, there's also a a monocle layout where it just layers them all one on top of each other so it's kind of full screen which is neat there is this sort of Fibonacci spiral dwindle which is basically what pop OS had as its default behavior and so as I keep spotting windows they get smaller and smaller however this is much more useful than the pop OS dwindle because say I want this say I want to make this oldest window down here the main one it's just one click and it gets pulled all the way to the top of the stack instead of having to like toggle it over gradually or whatever. So that's quite cool. Uh, and then I also have centered master which is the same idea again. You have your primary window in the middle and then the stack sort of lines up beside it. And again although they're all over the place on the screen you can see as I just scroll up and down how they're actually ordered in the stack like that. So it is strictly one dimensional. And I find this works really well for me because it gets rid of all of that, all of that burden of making decisions about where windows are gonna go and figuring out how to get to the window you want. It's, it's just brute force and ignorance, which works, which I find works really well. So just as an example of like what a, a, what a uh, normal sort of workflow of mine might look like, um, I do a lot of programming, so I'll have a text editor window open with, say, some code I'm working on. In this case, it's just I just opened up DWM, just like that. Um, this I have open just for uh, for the heck of it, but usually I'll have a window set up where I can kind of run my uh, run my tests, or just yeah, basically run the program and run tests and make sure that it works. Um, and I'll have a maybe something with a, some documentation or a manual pulled up and like if I need to read the manual a little bit more closely I can just pull that up make that my main thing look a little bit more closely at whatever I need to look at uh, maybe bring this up so I can run the executable in GDB and then we're back to back to programming and it's all very quick and seamless and like if I need to do a quick work do a quick web search. Well, I can just pull up my web browser. Uh, 
do a do a search, and then when I find what I need, I can get rid of it. Very nice, very convenient, and it just it gets out of my way in a way that i3 and pop shell never did. Uh, and I think this is where I'm, I've been actually using the tiling. And I think this is probably where I'm going to stay, at least for quite a while. I think i3 and pop shell are just, they have too many features. Uh, you have too much control in a way that kind of, at least for me, it gets in the way. It's way faster to, to get up and running with DWM than it is with those asterisks. <laughs> if you know C. <laughs> So, the bad side of DWM. Uh, now I know there there are D, there are basically clones of DWM in other languages that deal with this. I think um, I'm not going to list any names because I'm probably going to get them wrong. I I don't I, I really don't uh, spend that much time looking at just all the different pieces of software that are available to do the same thing. I I like this one, so I haven't bothered looking too much. But uh, one of the things about DWM is that it is based on a philosophy where you have a very stripped down bare bones program which you can extend yourself by applying source patches to or just modifying it yourself. So for me that's very straightforward and appealing because I'm a C programmer. So you know whatever it's just another day at the office right hacking DWM. Uh, but for someone who's not a programmer, I can see how that would not be appealing. <laughs> and I'm sh there are other window managers out there, I'm sure, that are a little bit uh, less uh, scary. So that's Tiling Window Managers. Well, I hope that you found this interesting. And I will see you in the next one.